guys, Rhonda Draculas here at RK3 Designs, and today I'm going to do, recreate actually, a piece that was inspired by Mike Quist at Stone Coat Countertop. I was honored to be able to help him at the World of Concrete uh, trade show, and we did several of these dirty pours and I really like them, and I wanted to bring uh, a more in-depth video with you guys, my community, on what we did. We're gonna be using basically the same colors, but know that as you do this, you can use any color that you like. I really like the uh, effect that you get. It really looks like a natural slab, a natural piece of stone. If you're gonna do a whole kitchen or a huge project, you can definitely recreate the technique, recreate the colors. You won't get the exact finish every time, but because you're doing the same process over and over, everything will be very cohesive throughout your project. We're gonna tape our edges. And the reason we do this is we're gonna be using a little more product than normal, about 30% more than on a regular pour. And the reason is, is we're really gonna move this product around. Um, you let gravity do all the work and cause some melding, uh, almost like natural stone was created over years and years and years. So if you're doing this on a countertop that maybe is already in place that you cannot move, don't panic. You can still use your heat gun to manipulate your product to get the same effect. So let's get started. First of all, I'm gonna be using blue tape. And we're gonna go around and tape our edge so that I build a little um, wall so that my product won't run over the side until I'm ready for that product to do so. I like using the blue tape so that instead of maybe like a really uh, tough tape that may pull off the paint on my edges. I'm gonna do two coats or two layers just so it gives it some stability. Okay, so I've double walled my tape so that I have a really good um, barrier and ran my fingers along the edges so that I have a good seal so my product doesn't seep out the bottom. So I'm gonna put this to the side and we're gonna start mixing up all of our colors. Okay, so I mixed up my product, and like I said, I mixed about 30% more than I would do on a regular pour, which is about three ounces per square foot. So I do have a lot of color. This process that we're gonna do, this technique, really looks cool with more colors. I usually like to stick to two or three metallics, bring in a couple of translucent dyes, and then uh, fill in with some spray paint. So I'm gonna just start divvying out my epoxy. This is stone coat countertop epoxy. Okay, so I have everything mixed up in my cups. Uh, I'm gonna start off by first taking my Mystic Moss. You don't have to take the Mystic Moss. You can take whatever color you want. And I'm gonna pre-lube my board. And the reason I do that is because epoxy likes to move where there's already epoxy laid down. It really uh, flows much better. So that's why I want to lay a little bit of epoxy down first. Because it's a little bit cool in here in my working environment, I like to maybe just a little bit heat up my product. That's gonna help me spread it out. And it, has, it doesn't have to be thick at all. All I'm doing is laying out something to get that epoxy to flow. If you skip this step, it wouldn't be detrimental at all. It's just you wouldn't have that material flow as nicely and as uniformly as it would with the product on there. And you can see I'm really not worried how it looks because all of this is gonna be covered up. All right, so now what we're gonna do I have a little bit of epoxy, clear epoxy already in my bucket left over from when I scraped the bucket. So we'll start off with that. And then we'll just start adding 
one at a time, layer upon layer upon layer of color, and then we'll pour it on. We're just gonna start randomly adding colors to our uh, container. Spray paint, white. And I'm gonna come in with a copper penny. And I'm gonna come in with the orange dye. And again, it makes absolutely no difference how you layer these but I do like to layer different materials each time. If I come in with a spray paint, next I may wanna come in with a metallic or a dye and then come in with something else instead of putting maybe two metallics on top of each other. So now I'm coming in with antique bronze, or brass, I'm sorry, antique brass. And I'm gonna come in with mystic moss now, which is the same color that we poured on the base. And let's see, let's come in with a red dye. Kind of a cranberry, actually, cranberry dye. Come in with black spray paint now. Copper metallic powder. And let me come in with um, translucent orange. And then I'm gonna come in with rustic orange sp spray paint with no cap. Copper penny. Mystic Moss, I have a tiny bit of that Mystic Moss left. Uh, let's come in with some red dye now. I do wear a mask when I'm using spray paint because of the fumes, uh, if I'm not shooting a video, however, my epoxy that I use is Stone Coat Countertop Zero VOCs. I'm very, very comfortable not wearing a mask with this product. So if you're using a different product, just be sure that you read your manufacturer's uh, label and safety precautions. I'm gonna come in with some orange. Use the rest of that. Orange spray paint. Copper metallic. Antique brass. That one I put a little thick. I wanted it to really kind of accent when I pour. I have a little bit of orange left. And I'll follow up with a little bit of black. You're gonna think we're crazy, but don't judge it until it's over with. So here we go. I'm gonna heat up one more time. So I'm just gonna come in and kind of randomly pour all this. And I don't really wanna scrape my edges because I don't wanna really meld all those colors together. I want them to be very distinct as they come out of the bucket. So I'm gonna get my handy dandy helper here, Emily, and we're going to go left. And let's go back up to the corner. So now all you're doing is just taking that material and we're just gonna move it over the entire board. Now, if you have a 
existing countertop where you obviously can't tilt, you can do the same manipulation with your heat gun. And you, if you want one specific area to move, you can heat up that one specific area. Let's go down and get just that area to move. So you can see you get some really natural looking patterns. Now I've got a lot of product on this one corner that I want to move. All right, so let's go. Yeah, I'll grab this corner from you. And let's go this sideways. There we go. And we'll come back. So now once you've gotten it all over your board, then it's kind of fun to say, well, I'd like to maybe have a little more color in one specific area. So I'm gonna let's go flat again. Now this is where we can look at it and say, okay, let's see. Maybe if we tilt it back, we're gonna open up this material right here. We're gonna open it up a little bit. And we'll go back this way. Okay, let's go flat. So what I want to do, I want this portion right here to move and I'm not so much this portion. So we're gonna wait just a little bit. We're gonna let it cool down. And then I'm gonna hit just random spots with my heat gun, um, with my torch, and get just that part to move. So we'll be back in just a, just a second. Okay, so we have done the, the pour. We've moved it around and I've let it sit for just a couple of minutes and I'm kind of just letting the epoxy tell me where it's going. All of these additives, because they're different types of additives, are all fighting against each other, which is really causing all of the effects that you see. Now, personally, there's a few things that I would like to change about the piece uh, and we're going to address that in our next step. You could stop here and leave it alone if there was a place that you really wanted to, like to me, I don't have enough detail in this corner. I would really like to add a little more detail. So what I'm gonna do in this corner as well, I'm gonna heat up just one portion of that uh, piece. And when I tilt it, that is gonna run more than the other pieces that have been sitting, the other material that's been sitting and it's cooled down just a little bit. So I really wanna heat up this area so that when I tilt it, that portion is gonna run faster than anything else. Because I really like the top. I don't really want it to move much, but I do wanna add a little bit of interest in my on my edges. Okay, perfect. That's kind of what I was wanting. Okay, so now we're gonna take the tape off and we're gonna let all of this material that's gathering in the edges flow over. Okay, so I pulled the tape off. I'm gonna heat it just a little bit, help with that product to roll over the edges. And I'm really starting to like, this piece is growing on me a little more. I'm starting to like how the little pieces of uh, spray paint are popping through as I heat it up and it almost looks like little specks of natural stone. Now, as this piece continues to self-level, you'll continue to get material flowing over your edge. Pick up my drips from the edge, go back in. There we go. Okay, so now we sit back and we decide, do we want to proceed? Do we want to walk away and call it a day? I'm actually really liking this piece, but I do want to go one step further just to show you guys if there's an area of a piece that maybe you would like to add a little more interest to that you can definitely go a step farther. And I am the queen of never learning to stop and always going to the next step. So that's why it's very important if you do pieces for yourself, 
on a sample board and you know that you're going to take that piece to a larger area that you film yourself so that you know each step in each process that you did and let's say that I took it one step too far and I, now I really don't like it I can rewind my video I can watch and say I should have stopped at that step right there so that's super important not only to write your recipe down, the colors that you used, but to video your actual process for when you really take this to scale. So I let this set for just a little bit. And if I can't get anything out of this process to you guys, it's let the epoxy do its thing. Don't judge it immediately. I did not like this when I first pulled the tape off as much as I'm loving it now because what's happening as it self levels, these, uh, all of this material additives are really fighting and I'm starting to see detail that I didn't see when I first poured. I really, really, really like it. I want you guys to be very honest with me and in the uh, comments below, leave me a comment. Would you leave it like this? Would you go to the next step? Maybe what would that next step be? And um, I, I really do appreciate your feedback. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what we call a granify technique. I'm gonna make one corner of this look like a natural granite. Uh, I may end up hating it, we don't know. But if I do hate it, I have it on video and I can tell myself when I do this at scale, not to do the step I'm fixing to do. So here we go. Black spray paint. And I'm gonna come back over it with Mystic Moss. And I'm gonna check my spray pattern on my table. That's what I want. I don't want it super fine, but I don't want a straight line. I have it kind of where it's coming out in big droplets. So here we go. I, this is the area, just this little corner that I wanna granify because I want a little bit more interest in that corner. So here we go. Lightly hit it with some black spray paint. I'm going to come over the top, fracture it, and let it do its thing. Maybe a little bit in that back corner, a little bit, and we'll see what happens. I want to fracture it a little more, but I don't want to add any more color. So I'm coming in with just a clear spray paint, I mean a clear alcohol. That's kind of cool. All right, we're gonna let that sit for just a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so I've waited a few minutes and I see I have these wonderful drips over here on the table and I really wanna utilize that because I wanna bring in some natural fault lines. And so I'm gonna take my drips from the table and I'm just gonna kind of give myself some fault lines across. Natural stone, you'll find, has a lot of natural fault lines. And this will be very, very faint as this piece continues to move. Those lines of epoxy that I just drizzled across will move out and be very faint but if you ever look at a slab of natural stone, you'll see very faint colors running through your stone. And so that's what I'm trying to create here. The later in your pour that you do this, when your epoxy is setting up, the more distinct your line will be. So if I wait 30 minutes or so to do that line that I just uh, stretched across, that epoxy line is gonna have a tendency to stay a little more distinct. If you do it right after you pour, when your epoxy's fresh and still moving, that line of color will spread out. So depending on what look you're going for will depend on at what process in your pour that you do those fracture lines. Okay guys, I really like this piece. It, it, it is coming out exactly what my mind was thinking, even though I went a little, uh, two more steps, I guess you would call it, I like it and I'm gonna call it a day and be done and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. 
actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. My favorite mica color is clay when I'm using earth tones. So I think I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of clay mica powder onto my piece. This is clay mica, a quarter of an ounce mixed with uh, eight ounces of 91% alcohol. And let's just see what it does. So I'm just gonna come with my hand and I'm just gonna kinda touch just a few places. And now I'm gonna take it and sprinkle it so that I get little smaller amounts. And I'm gonna let that grow on me. You cannot judge that right when you do it because it's like jalapenos. When you first put jalapeno and you take a bite, you're like, ah, that's hot. But we're gonna let it ease out work into the epoxy piece and make our judgment in just a little bit. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell for future notifications. Leave me comments. I love hearing what you have to say. Until next time, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.